Welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft, and I've got to say, every now and then an episode comes around that I'm just terribly excited to record, and that seems like every episode lately, but especially this one, we're going to be touching the void later on. In the end dimension, with our totems of undying. <laughs> I've got something absolutely ridiculous repaired. Repaired? Jeez, that's what I've been doing to all of my tools, because it turns out that this raid farm is also an XP farm. What I was trying to say is that i got something very cool prepared for the end of this episode. And later on in the episode, I'm going to show you how many Totems of Undying I've gotten so far. You know, there's three chests over here. Let's have a look in the bottom one. We're not going to look in the two above. <laughs> this is absolutely bonkers. Look at the emeralds. I've also managed to get some Trader Llama heads in here. As they've been wandering into the trap, I guess. Anyway, I guess I want to explain a few things about what's been going on. And while I do that, there's also going to be like a time lapse in the corner of the screen of the raid farm in action. So if you don't know what's going on here, make sure you've seen the last episode of Hermitcraft, the one before this one. And of course, subscribe because I'm going to tell you a little something. We're probably going to abandon this farm and build an even better one in the near future. There is a lot to look forward to here on this channel at the moment. The first thing I want to talk about though with this farm is a problem you can see through the raid farm. Because pillagers are spawning in the pillager bounding box, it means when a raid's wave is building up, it then gets cancelled as a pillager is naturally spawned and it kind of assumes it's part of the last wave of the raid so then you have to wait for that pillager to come to the center while other ones can spawn you kill it and it starts filling up again but then if another one spawns it interrupts it and so it kind of slows down the whole process this farm could be even better if we did it in a different way and that is why we will actually be building another raid farm that's going to be completely different in the future also look at this look at all these crossbows i've stocked up oh we're going to take advantage of this at some point and have a whole bunch of fun with the enchantments here did I just see the same enchantment twice on it? Oh my god, look at this! It's got piercing 1 and piercing 2 on it! I mean, that probably won't do anything special, but having the same enchantment, that's, that's a bug. <laughs> that's what we found, we found a bug. Well I, my friends, have had a radiant time over here! Oh, I'm so funny! <laughs> that's the worst joke ever. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyway, yeah, we've had a great time over there at the raid farm, but we're going to be back later on for those totems of undying, but that's all the raid business we're doing in this episode. So we have business to attend to in the extended shopping area. Also, what is this and when did it appear? Has this been here for some time? <laughs> have I found a UFO? Oh, uh, over in this direction we have the wall, which I will check up on in a moment ago. The wall next to the other wall. <laughs> Uh, anyway, there is Storage Wars, and I have been informed that I have actually won, which I totally did not expect. Now, I came back and put in an additional bid on the diamond plot over here, which we can go in and look at. And you know what? We could have looked at the other ones if we had gotten here sooner, but it looks like the other hermits have taken out those goods. So you'll have to probably go and uh, check out their videos if you want to know what the other goods were. Now, I had a lot of people speculating that this might have been a bad bet because they would probably be dud enchantments. And I thought about it and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, Curse of Binding, Curse of Vanishing, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a whole bunch of those. Now, the Dragon's Head is a Dragon's Head, I will take that. A Diamond Block is a Diamond Block, I will take that as well. And then there's Diamonds in the Wall, so at least I get some of my Diamonds back for my bet. <laughs> But the shulker boxes are complete, done with a diamond hoe. Where are the boats, Mumbo? Where are the boats? Hey, we do get a trident, so that's pretty decent. Yeah, that's all right. I actually got one while I was working on the raid farm as well, so I've managed to collect a few of those. Now, we'll also get some elytra wings, unless that has some dud enchantments. Let's check out what's on these then. Okay, Curse of Vanishing, that's what I expected to see on every little bit. That ain't so bad. And where are the wings? The wings are the wings. So what's up with the sword? Eh. No, I think this is pretty good. Don't I also get to keep these item frames? <laughs> I'm taking everything out of here. Also, the shape of the uh, the build here. What's behind there? Just just a hole. Just a just a vacant hole, Mumbo. As much as I don't want to admit it, we all know that that wasn't worth 64 diamonds. 
But you see, I am a man who honours his bets and also has lots of disposable diamonds, which is a convenience. Oh, there we go. I'm happy to pay for it. That was a bit of fun. That was definitely a lot of fun. I'm looking forward, though, to seeing what the other hermits got for this. So, oh yeah, I took it out, didn't I? There we go. I'm going to put that back and there's the diamonds. There are also no new takers on the wall. I mean, I really would have thought this stuff would have disappeared very quickly. It's free. It's literally free. Tell the other hermits they can come here and take as much of it as they want. Oh jeez, it's all just sitting here not getting used. So that's enough reading for now about those unused resources. It's time to report on the ultimate XP storage system because I've got some work to do over here. If you're not familiar with this project, this is a room where you can walk into and take out almost enough XP to repair one of your picks fully. It's absolutely fantastic and you can see down here that we've got as far as filling these ones up. So almost seven eighths of the entire array on this side is done but we have some redesigning to do because if I just nip round the back here there is actually a design that is even smaller than this one over here now which means I am very tempted to rebuild these and especially the ones on the other side which are a bit over the top right so with that in mind what I have to do is rebuild them in a way where we keep these things working because at the moment you can walk up to here Grab the green die and you'll get all of the XP. But I want to rebuild it in a way where we can leave it in that state and not accidentally activate the redstone or start dispensing all of the green die from where it's stored up XP. So I've got to be very careful when I do that. And one other thing to note, I've got a little bit of rebuilding to do over here because at the end of that episode, I talked about how there was something, uh, something going on in this room that you may or may not notice. It's time for me to reveal the awfulness of my building. If I place blocks like this... Lines up just like that. Yep, that looks that looks pretty good. That looks fine. But if I come over to this side, you'll find out that I accidentally built that side of the room off by one block. The end there is eight blocks wide. The end over here is nine blocks wide. So I've got to rebuild all of this and move the furnaces forward. But at least these ones haven't even been hooked up to the system yet, so they've got no XP inside of them. So if you don't fully know what this project is about because you missed our episode a couple back, I highly recommend you go and check it out because it's a really good project and you'll want to understand the ins and outs of how it all works. But anyway, right now in this episode, you're about to see some footage that I've edited together. It was a lot of fun. We played a fantastic new mini game on the server. So sit back and enjoy the next part of this episode. So, Ravengers Run is a minigame made by CubFan135 All In Survival Minecraft. There is a hand built city with buildings and roads full of Ravagers, and the players must run through the streets, avoiding the Ravagers and getting into the color coded buildings and collecting concrete of that color from the dropper inside of the building. They then have to make their way back to the lobby where there is a fancy redstone display telling the team what colors it is they need to collect. There's also a really cool overview map of the whole area for the players to use and so we all got together with some friends on the Hermitcraft server to play around of this wonderful game. So for the first of two rounds, we decided to use the randomizer built into the lobby. This would give us random colored blocks, and we decided each team would have nine in total to collect of the 16 available. So this means there was an average of three for each player as we were playing in teams of 3v3. Are we ready? I am ready. Okay, yep. okay. Three, two, one, go. All right, here we go. And we're off. Oh, through, oh there's through. a Ravager right away, Grant. Gotta, gotta get right, they're they're in front of me, they're fodder. Oh my god, there's a right Ravager on. following them. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in, I'm in. Alright, I'm in the black house. Oh, there's two in front of the yellow house. Oh, great. Okay, How does the stunning one. work? Oh god, I got, I got slain. Oh. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> where, is, where is the um, block? <laughs> it's in the dropper. There's ah. droppers in each house. I tried to block him, but that didn't really... Yep, you gotta be, you gotta be careful. Oh These God. guys hit hard. These guys yeah. hit hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are they like, oh, oh, there is. There's like, I can use. Okay, I can jump. Oh snap. Oh jeez. Am, am, am I the only one dying? No. Oh wow. <laughs> Please say no. <laughs> I have a really mm -hmm. deadly loot, man. There is like, they're all packed up here. Oh yeah, God. you gotta be, gotta be careful, man. Gotta be yeah, careful. Okay. It's, it's, 
Try to try to draw him out if you can. Yeah, there's no way that there's three of impact there, man. I can't get through there. I'm coming back this way. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh no, I got I got cornered. Oh man. All right, Pete. All right, they had one, two, three. They got one. We got one. So yeah, we're good. Where's the door? Oh god. Oh, let's get the life out no. of me. Dude, this is really hard. Can you? It how is, is hard. The parry? How is the parrying working? Can you? It is can hard. You, can you always block them? Ooh, here we go, here, right, we go yeah. here we go. Yeah, you should always... I, I think it's like 50% actually, if I'm, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I've got my oh God. next oh, two yes. colors. Okay, oh. I got... Is that a pink black? Can I make my way back? Okay, I got yellow. I'm done. No, pot's clear. Yeah, some of the paths are going to be really clear. Just depends. Yeah. Which one are you going to come through? Is this house? Okay, I got yellow. Okay, I got yes. pink. Yes. Alright, I'm going for... Uh, I'm going for light gray. Right, I've got my colors. Uh, what ones do you okay, want help okay. with? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try oh, red, red then. Yeah, go for it. Oh. Um, red or green? Where was green again? Right <laughs> green is pretty Ooh, much straight. Going down. the other way now. Okay, I'm going for green. Find green then. Are you allowed to take a map around with you? Yeah. Oh no, you can't take a map. Oh my goodness me, there's a. Uh... Okay, here we Although go. Here we go. Be, here we go. Might be a good idea oh, to give How'd you get into the red house? Point. Oh, it's not the red house. That's why. Okay, I found that. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> my goodness me! I'm dead! I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm totally to dead. Yeah. Okay, I'm in, inside red. Got the okay. red block. Green looks super crowded at the moment. I don't I'm know. Going that way with all the okay, we got here. lime, because lime's. Lime's yeah, yeah. kind of. I'm in lime. lime. Yeah, you got it. Nice. Yeah, it was. Okay. Oh god. Oh, okay, I'm oh trying my. to distract him a bit. Okay, yep, I got the red block. I'm trying to make okay, my way come back. Out, Ek. Come, Ek. Okay, I'm out, I'm out, and I'm heading back. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. Oh, they're all onto me. Oh my you god. Got it's lime? lime X? Do you have lime? Yeah, I got lime. Yeah, Can I go straight lime. down okay, the middle? I think, I think we got it. I think we got all of them. I think this is it. Yeah, that's okay, it. Lime. lime. Yep, and place red. it down. Place Bam. it down. Done. That's it. GG. That was amazing. Oh, yeah, I didn't render. I love that. It's so much fun. Warm up round? Uh. <laughs> Yo! Yo, dude. Okay. Uh, Good game. Lie, oh, man. I didn't get a single block. Dude, this rough, is way man. harder than I thought, dude. I got one. One block, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is super Whoa. hard. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first round, and for this second round, we decided to choose the opponent's color one at a time. But I'm not going to show you the full round, just some clips of the funny deaths that occurred in this match. Oh man, okay, they're in front of the door. Can you kind of try to okay. run back here and, and snag a few? There you go, yeah, yeah, yeah oh, I, nice. got him. I got him. Okay, uh, I'm coming. Okay. Ooh, oh, I'm this coming. is the way we should do it then, teamwork. Oh, I'm yeah, gonna man. die here. I'm, I'm through, I'm through. That's good. Oh! I got, I got <laughs> 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 That's just surrounded got... all of a sudden. Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> oh! Alright, I got green coming in. We need just orange and brown now. Orange and brown. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh. oh. I made a bad call. We need bad orange, call. right? No, 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 Okay, go, I'm go, about go, go. to go into brown, but I might die. Okay, I'm in brown, and I've got brown concrete. And I've got right, golden carrots. To... It's tough. Oh my god, there's so many! No! Oh, I ran out, and there's like... Oh man, that's there's the like... last block we need, oh. though. Oh, we well, the, the block the is way. on the floor. We should... Let's go together as a group not. here. Doc, I'm behind you. Oh, um, is that it? Oh, they won. Oh, <laughs> we were one behind them. Oh. Nice. GG. 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 Well, 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 what an epic mini game! I hope you enjoyed watching it because it is really, really fun to play. So much fun that we're talking about doing some tournaments and live streaming playing the game. And yeah, it could become a thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, back here I've moved everything forward by one. And then I've gone and ripped out all of the redstone to create a new design. And then I was like, oh, I overlooked something. This design requires the use of this block here which means I'd have to put a trapdoor in to kind of hide it and make it look flush at the front. And then I was thinking, this is just typical. I've just ripped out all of that redstone. But here's the thing, I need to rip it out and move it forward by one block anyway. So, not really a big deal. But if we swing around the back here, look at this. That is so compact. And I am 
yet to test it, but I think I understand it pretty much works the same way, just again, simplifying some of what's going on here. So when the furnace fills up and we press the button after taking out the cactus, we can send an update through to the back here. It pulls up the observer, so it sends a signal to that one, which goes downwards and creates a clock. Now, the comparator would already be on at this point, so I think that means it would just spit out all of the items and then the comparator would turn off, a signal would go back up to the top, this thing would do its magic again and turn off the clock. Really cool stuff. Now I've thought about it, I have made up my mind, we're going to stick with the previous design that we had in this space. I want to say a big thank you to Relia2003 for sharing this design with me on Twitter, it's fantastic, I highly recommend it. The uh, problem is, of course, I'm very fussy and I don't think I could live with these birch trapdoors right here. It just, just doesn't look right to me. This needs to stay as endstone and the bricks. So all of this has been rebuilt to how it was, obviously pushed over a block. And then I've been working on the water streams. Now, due to the position of the water streams themselves, when we have to move them upwards, it all of a sudden becomes a puzzle of its own. The first one is going to be nice and easy. The water pushes the items across the ice and they go upwards here. But the other one they're going to need to drop down so that we can have water push them across into another one coming up. It may seem simple but it was hard to do this like side by side or in a compact nature, you know. So anyway, the water streams go all the way around here. And then on the opposite side it's a bit of a puzzle again. So this one over here, the items simply fall down. Now notice how that water stream is actually moving across. Very fortunate for me, the opposite side of that block is a purple stairs, so we can hide a water source block in the wall. Without that, this might have not been possible. Well, I'm sure there probably was a way. The other water stream has to come around this way, so it can send the items and drop them directly on top of that water. So the next job is to take care of all of this. And that's right, I've ripped it all out, and uh, it feels weird, man. I put so much effort into this. But anyway... The one big difference with the design between the two is that we've got these hoppers right here. And you know, I can't do this with a full inventory. Okay, so I have to break the hopper and then replace it with a downwards facing hopper. In our new design, this would fill up. And that means that it's filling up right now as well. But I can put all of the cactus back in. Wait, was that one not full when I broke it? Is this some... Aha! <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, some's on the ground down here. So when this thing fills up fully, it will have the same amount of XP in the furnace as all of the other ones will. Because that is now going to be active, that furnace. Yes, so there you go. All the cactus stockpiled above it and the bamboo as well will mean this thing just continues making more of it. Now the real question is can we build up all of the redstone behind this to make it work? The good news is we can. There's just one little challenge to overcome and then the rest of it is kind of easy to build. I've done this deliberately so that I've left out the piston at the top just in case something gets accidentally activated, which I don't think it would, but I'm going to do the next step first anyway. You see, when you place down an observer block, it doesn't actually create a signal, right? So the trick is that I needed to place these ones here from this side, and luckily for me, I can do that through the gap of the hoppers. And there was a time when hoppers just had a big full hitbox and you couldn't do something like that. So that's been a lifesaver. And then of course I'll have to replace these blocks as well. And then that just means the piston at the back is the only thing to be placed. And if I crouch, I can place them like this. Some sea lanterns at the bottom and that is it. I don't think I've missed a thing here. So I am a little short on time for what I've got planned for this episode. So next time we're back here, this will all be done. It didn't take me too long to do that, and I'll probably do some of it on a live stream as well. So remember, follow me over on twitch.tv slash if you want to catch my live streams. I do do them rather regularly. So my friends, you have waited long enough to see how many totems of undying we got from this farm. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh yeah, none. Uh, also, none in that chest either. That's because I moved them down into this one. Oh yeah, and I put some in here, and I put some in there, <laughs> and I put some in there as well. That's right, man. That is right. What a stupid amount of totems of undying. Oh, this is going to be... Okay, this is going to be really interesting. So now what we're going to do is take a trip to the end dimension and attempt to go low down into the void. So my friends, I have a dream in life, and that is to become the Minecraft player that goes furthest into the void. It's in my name. <laughs>
And of course we can use the Totems of Undying to prevent ourselves from getting killed. So if we were to jump into the void with these in our hands, we'd go a little bit further as it would keep us alive. So then I started to think about how I would make my way through all of the Totems of Undying one by one like this. But then I would have to move them out of my inventory into my hotbar. If I go in here and just move a, fruit, a few across like this and hold this slot right here, every time I would shift click and then that one would get used and disappeared, it would go to that slot. So then I could open up my inventory and continuously move them into my slot. And this means that we could get further and further down into the void. We could monitor the Y level and try and set a world record for the player who's gone furthest into the void. I mean, it's a ridiculous idea, right? But we're going to try it in Survival Minecraft. Speaking of trying things, I should probably give this a little bit of a test run, first of all. So my friends, in this game it is possible to make assumptions and I was thinking about void damage. It is kind of different from other types of damage. It bypasses all sorts of resistance and now I'm a little bit worried. Maybe the Totem of Undying doesn't work when you jump into the void. I really hope it does, but that's why we're doing a test here. I've also set my spawn so we can respawn and do it again if it turns out it works and we can use loads of Totems of Undying and all of that good stuff. You'll see I've also enabled the coordinates on the bottom there so we don't have to have this up because we are trying to see, remember, how far down into the void we can actually go. So let's take a faithful step together. Bam! <laughs> all right, there we go. Will these totems of undying work? Ah, oh, they won't. And we got as low as minus 242. You know, I'm trying to set a world record here for the player that goes furthest into the void. Awakening from my slumber, I've had another idea. You know, Mumbo gave us some wings earlier and I brought them with me. And you know what? I wonder if we can rock it into the void. Let's try and outchase the void damage and get down there as fast as we can. This is going to be interesting. I, I kind of want to face you like while we do this challenge, but I think to make sure I don't fly in the wrong direction, which of course is downwards, I'm going to do it like so. So now we just use these rockets and go as fast as we can. And we actually got less? Huh. I thought we would have flown downwards faster. Good thing I got this uh, this bed here so I can just respawn and give it another attempt if I want. No, I'm, I'm messing with you. I, I didn't use the bed. I'm not that silly. Well, I've been that silly on a live stream. Anyway, I was just thinking... Well, actually, let's get our health down a little bit first. So today we learned that the Totem of Undying won't save you when you go into the void. What about if you're going to use a bed? <laughs> yeah, it does. And that looked really, really cool, didn't it? And now I'm on fire. Jeez. Well, I have a question for all of you. Do you think that the Totem of Undying not working in the void should be considered a bug? I certainly think it should. And maybe we could submit that to the bug tracker and see what Mojang think of it. If they considered it a bug and they made it work, then we could use these Totems of Undying to go as far into the void as possible. But now I'm speculating two things. So I want you to go down to the comments below. If you have any ideas on how we could go deeper into the void, let me know. And also, what do you want to see me do with these Totems of Undying? We just experimented it with it on a bed, and now I'm wondering what other things can we use this for? Because the void was my idea for what we could use this for, and it turns out we can't. So leave a comment down below, let me know what we should do with all of these. And so my friends, that brings us to the end of another episode. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then leave a like. As always, thank you so much for the support. And I'll be seeing you very soon on another episode of Hermitcraft. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.